Rebel objects are code structures that allow you to encapsulate and replicate code. They basically provide a, a code facility to bundle packages of functions and data together so that they can be copied and reused and accessed, most importantly, as self-contained units. Uh, they work as templates so that you can replicate code um, and create similar code, bits of code, without having to um, create each of those uh, bits of code from scratch. And they also provide uh, an important way to manage function names so that they don't conflict with other function names that may be imported into a program and provide a way to refer to them and use them uh, with the data that they're created with by default. In code, they're created like this. A rebel object blueprint is created in this way. Uh, you give a word name, uh, use the function make to create an object, and you create a definition for that object. It's important to understand that um, rebel objects are a little bit different than what you see in uh, other languages. Uh, the idea of class isn't, um, uh, isn't intact as it is in other languages. These basically are blueprints that you can create. And the one main difference is that with classes in other languages, if you change the base class, all of the other classes are changed by default. With rebel blueprints, these type of objects, um, you create a blueprint and you create other objects from them, but if you change the base class, the other uh, child classes don't automatically get changed, or uh, child objects don't automatically get changed. Um, one way to just start looking at these and understand what objects are is by looking at the idea of a um, account. This is a typical uh, uh, functional reason you might want to actually use an, an object in Rebel programming. And they can contain um, uh, functions and other variable definitions data of any type. In this case, we're going to create an object called account. Um, we're going to give the, uh, the bunch of variables in this account object um, some names, first name, last name, address, phone, email address, and we're going to set them all equal to the next, and the last item there is none, so all of these are going to be set to none initially. Um, so any account object is going to have those variables, and it's going to have the initial definition of each of those variables as none, um, and the way you refer to that, uh, those items, is by using object in the refinement slash and then the word that you're referring to in that object. So in this example, um, <clears throat> if we want to set um, any of the uh, uh, bits of data or functions in that uh, object to uh, be equal to a certain thing, we re reference that object uh, and that, that uh, word inside the object. And we can set it using a typical um, colon to assign data to that that bit. And again, it could be either a data or a function. So in our account example, uh, we're going to set the phone number to be this number, and we're going to set the address in the account to be that, um, that address. If we want to see what's contained in an object, we can um, use the help function or the uh, shorthand version of help, which is question mark. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this account in the rebel and so you can see how that looks using the help function here is the initial object if you want to see what's in that object you put help and that shows us that it's an object um, it has these items all set to the value of none if we set some of those items for this information in the object and now if we type help object that object again it will show us the information that's in there and then it contains uh, several strings now. okay now um, what we're going to do is create a new um, object based on that existing object. So what this is going to do is let us replicate the code. Um, and we do it the same way. We're going to use a label and instead of just making an object and defining a new one, we're going to make an object based on an existing object and then we're going to include the values that should be 
change from that original prototype definition. So far we have an object create account and we're going to create a bunch of different users from that account. So all of those um, users will have um, first name, last name, address, email address, and so forth um, variables contained in. And by default, they're going to be none or what we've typed in as the default um, information in the account. So in this case, we're making a new account, calling it user1, and putting some uh, new information in there. The uh, one variable that's not in that list is, looks like in this case, phone. So that will be included in the user account. It just will be set to nothing. So in this case, if we type help for user1 now, we get, uh, again, these objects that have been changed from the original definition. Um, and uh, the phone number actually was set in the previous one, so that, that object contains that same phone number from the previous object. And you can also extend um, the definition of an object. We can create another new account. Uh, in this case, we're creating an account object. Calling it user2, we're making a new account object. So it's going to have, again, all the information that's in that original account object and changing all of that um, information that was uh, none by default. And this time we're adding a new item to it. So here we're creating an account that has, for example, if we hadn't put all of these variables into the new definition, they would just be the ones that are included by default in the account object, the none. Uh, this one has a favorite color in it. So we put that in and we can see that all the information has been changed and the new variable has also been added to that. Two, and we can see what's included in that information. And in this case, so we want to create um, another user at the same address, same phone number. It's very easy for us to do that. We create a new user, which is uh, an account based on user two. It has all of that information in it. Only we're going to change the first name and the last name. Makes it very easy for us to create these prototypes and build um, new objects based on them with changed information. Um, so user 2a has all of this information. Same information as user 2, same last name, same address, um, just with a different, information, uh, different email address and a different first name. So when we make a definition, we're using whatever is in the existing object, whatever variables and whatever functions are in that existing object, and if we, if we want to change anything, we can change those items in the definition, and everything else will be included from the original object, and it uh, um, won't be changed. Okay? Now we can do things with those objects. In this case, we're going to do a comparison. We're going to check um, the address of user1 and the address of user2 um, and do something. We're going to print that both users live at the same location, if that's true. And in this case, they, they do not. 